Let's hear it for the next lightning talk. I'm going to talk about designing experiences for low-code apps. But before that, I just wanted to get a sense from this audience, the lovely audience who's gathered here today morning. What is low-code, according to you? Do you all have an understanding of low-code? Have you heard it? Low-code, no-code, if that sounds familiar. So yeah, can you tell me if you uh, know about it? I mean, a little bit about what do you know about low-code? Yes. So he's right if uh, people are not able to hear him. Local platforms are basically environments or development environments where you can easily drag and drop your components and create a deployable application. It's like uh, really fast. But um, have you known the different low code platforms? So, the reason why I am talking today about low-code platforms is because I am creating a practice, or rather I am uh, responsible for a design practice that would only design for low-code applications. And all the different applications have their own limitations. So we have, in LTI Mindtree, we have been developing apps on Apian, Power Platforms, Pega, OutSystems, Mendix, and Bubble.io, Uncork, so and so forth. There are many. And as a UX designer, when I started off this practice just last year, the challenge was to understand each and every of these low-code platforms and design for them. Now, the obvious question would be, why are we doing that? Right? So before that, I'll just take a step back and understand how many of you know how long does it take for any application to get created and deployed. Deployed meaning it is there on the server, and now it's accessible to its users. Any idea from this audience? Approximately a 15 to 20 task flow application. Say around four months, six months, eight months or so. And then does it include UX, research, design, testing, coding? Right. This is in a normal scenario where we are developing applications on .NET, on SharePoint, on different technology platforms. And I hope we as designers know these technology platforms because each of these come with their limitations and their advantages also. And as I started on this journey of leading a UX design practice for low-code apps, I realized how much we used to take uh, you know, development for granted. It, I actually now in my practice, my team, I make it mandatory for each and every team member to understand the deployment platform or the technology on which the application is to be built. And why is that so? Because if you do not understand the technology, the limitations, you will not be able to create a usable app out of it. And that's the truth. So many times, so many of us have experienced this, right? Whatever we design and whatever gets developed, is it the same? Right? Can you please raise your hands who have felt this, apart from me? Right? And why is that so? Because sometimes the developers, and they don't do it on purpose. I have full sympathy with them. So they have limitations. We as designers, we don't know that. Right? And we, it's our responsibility as well to work with them. And sometimes, when you go into the testing phase, you realize that, oh, we, if I had known this, I could have done this better. I could have designed it if I would have, you know, worked with the developer to understand what are the limitations. So low code gives you that flexibility. It gives you that opportunity to connect with your developers and understand where the lack is in terms of getting the design right onto the development platform. Rapid prototyping is one of the features of the low-code applications or the platforms that allow you to fail fast and you know, fail safe. In the sense, if something is developed, you do get an opportunity as a UX designer to correct it, to sit with the developer and say, OK, what are 
the ways of getting the design right. It also allows all the business stakeholders to ensure that they are the ones who are creating this prototype because it's so easy to use. It's just a matter of drag and drop, right? So sometimes the initial prototype is created by them, the IT department of the client side. How many of you all know? So many of our enterprise customers, client side, they have their own IT department, right? And sometimes we feel, okay, they don't get what we are saying because they are also struggling. They also depending on us to get things done in a visual way and see, okay, how is it going to work? So you, you may start feeling that, am I required or not if the developer is doing that? Yes, we are required. Why? Because we need the UX strategy, right? Developers will not know how do we design this overall flows with respect to the persona challenges. Then we do need the optimized user flows also. How do you reduce the number of clicks? Because the low-code apps come with a template that you know, they have those pointed flows for achieving a particular task. The next is the navigation. When to use the top navigation, when to use the left navigation, when to use the sub navigation. They would not know when to use the search and not the advanced search, when to use the filters, right? And the brand strategy. So these are the areas where we need a UX designer and then we have created wonders by getting involved in the development cycle. So this is the framework that I came up with to design for low-code apps. Now, till two, three years back, it was considered um, a non-necessity of uh, having a UX designer on board, but now everybody understands why we need a UX designer on board. You first study the personas, you optimize the workflow process that are already there, you leverage the components to create the brand equity or the brand value, and you also apply accessibility, inclusivity in this design. We did a lot of this for our customers, and we also created some Gen AI workflows for them by getting involved in the start. And I'll just try and show you what we've done for one of our customers. We created a tool that would accelerate you know, uh, the entire process of creation of process flow that can be easily deployed directly. So this is just a demo. Let me know if you're able to hear the sound. Just one minute. Um, I think uh, my laptop is on mute. Can you unmute it so that we hear the sound? It's on the touch bar. Is it done? Amplify is a tool that can easily create process flows and deployable artifacts required to kickstart a project. Let us see how this is done in a scenario where the client has provided minimal requirements. This tool has been developed on Appian with Geni interventions. You can get started by entering a free flow text of requirements or copy from the business requirements shared by the stakeholders. Based on the input, the tool will create a list of all the steps required to create the process flow. You can choose to go ahead with the ones generated by the tool or edit it. Based on the steps, a number of artifacts are created that are easily deployable on the low-code platform. The entire process that would earlier take weeks to complete can now be accomplished in 8 to 10 minutes. This tool can be utilized in the early stages of greenfield projects where requirements are least known and a quick prototype is required to be created for client review. Okay, so I hope you were able to hear the audio. For, to me, it sounded a little muffled. Uh, I'll just recap what you just saw. We created a tool to create the business process flows. And why we did this is in, in case of greenfield projects, where you know there are no applications, it's all a manual process, you have to create these process flows. Very, very much necessary to get the application uh, started on a low-code platform. And uh, when we are doing a research, we come up with these flows, but that entire time of creating the flows and then getting onto the low-code platform, and then the low-code platform creating those flows takes around two to three weeks. 
right? Because you are done with your research, then you come up with your design, your flows, and then you give it to the developer. Now we created a tool, you give in the requirements, it would create those steps, those flows, automatically. And we are the designers who designed it with the APN developers to create this tool. So for a greenfield project, the initial discussion becomes really, really easy. So it's, I remember this statement uh, delivered by Manish yesterday in his talk yesterday. He said that, don't think about how AI is going to impact design. Think about how design is going to impact your Gen AI applications, the AI. And that's what we've done out here. And it resonated with my uh, presentation, and hence I thought it's, I can borrow his lines. So that's what is the possibility of UX design. You know, what are, uh, you know, what are the things that we can do as a UX designer in creating loco dApps? So just summarizing, uh, according to the Gartner's report, around, you know, 70% of the new apps, especially in the enterprise world, are going to be low code based. And that's a reality. In fact, I just flew in from Sweden because I had to conduct a workshop for another of their four different apps to be built on low code platform. And we are um, getting into the space where business teams sometimes are going to come up with their own prototype and they will ask you as a UX designer, can you please make it more usable and more efficient? So a well-designed enterprise app can raise productivity if a UX designer is involved at the right stage, the right time. Well, it can do wonders, and that's what we are trying to do at LTM Mindtree. And I'm really, really looking forward to people who get their uh, skills <laughs> developed in low-code platforms. Please are, uh, you know, getting themselves known to these different platforms because that's what we are looking out for. So, yeah, thank you. I guess I'm on time. <laughs> thank you so much. If you do want to know more about me, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. This is my QR code. And if there are any questions, I can take them as well right now. Hey, everyone. Yes. So we are opening the floor to one question. OK. Mike, please. Hi. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to know, while you design uh, this, are you uh, also able to support a design system Yes. Because they would have their own limitations going in. I do understand uh, working on limitations, but uh, every clientele would want a look and feel and their you know, experience to be passed on. So how does that happen? Yes, we do that. Uh, so although they have their own system, they have their own custom templates, we do have uh, the ability or the flexibility to design those components. So we apply the brand style guide onto these components, and that's what we've started doing once we get invo involved. Otherwise, earlier, uh, since only developers were involved, the IT people were involved, they didn't know how to do that, and why would it be necessary? So that's when, when a UX designer gets involved, you can do this. There are a lot of things that the developers also started knowing, okay, this is possible, after the UX designer started asking, can we do this, can we do that, and so on and so forth. So it's possible, yes.